Jonathan here with Vapor Honing Technologies. Today the purpose of the video is to talk about uh, CFM and working PSI and static PSI and how they all combine together um, and what operating parameters we need to run the machines that we manufacture. And so the machine we're working with is the VH800P and the operating parameters are the same throughout all of our equipment that we manufacture. Whether it's smaller, whether it's larger, they still take the same air requirements uh, for each model. And so this is a good presentation of, of these requirements. What we're going to do is we're actually going to put a CFM gauge that we have here um, into the line and we're going to be able to measure the volume of air that we need, so the CFM, cubic feet per minute. And that's going to tell us uh, the air compressor requirements that we need, and of course many other factors in a shop, such as the plumbing, um, that you're going to need to implement as well. Also at the same time, we're going to look at working PSI versus static PSI, and again, those pressures that we need. So. Uh, to keep up those PSIs, those working pressures and static pressures, or, or excuse me, the working pressures, we need the CFM. The, there's a certain number here that we're about to see that we're going to need to keep those pressures. Otherwise, your pressures will drop and your machine and your blast will become non-effective at that point. So what we're working with today, uh, we're working with 100 PSI static pressure. It's going to put us around 50 PSI working pressure and then we're going to check the CFM and work from there and when you know one thing that's going to uh, to change your CFM number within your shop um, is going to be your plumbing system I mean it always does not come down to your air compressor your air compressor could be large enough but your plumbing in your workshop could be inadequate it could be plumbed incorrectly and you know you could have plumbing set up correctly but maybe the improper line sizing that you would need to get the correct volume. Um, you could imagine if you had a half inch diameter, inner diameter air hose uh, that's 50 feet versus the same size air hose and 100 feet, obviously those two hoses are going to have different CFMs at the end of the line and it's all about how much air we can force through that line and of course what kind of pressures are we going to get on the other side and so those two hoses are going to be different again there's only so much volume we can force through that half inch ID airline of course uh, within 50 feet it's going to be much different at 100 feet and again the CFM is important to keep our pressures and our pressures are important so that our machine is effective and that's one thing that we always stress so you know, it's not always about buying the biggest, baddest compressor you could find. It's also about how you can plumb your shop correctly or where you might be able to locate your machine maybe closer to your air compressor source. And of course, you know, this goes for many other tools in your shop uh, or in your facility. They may need certain air requirements and this video might help you uh, with those as well. So hopefully it does help. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, CFM gauge and we're going to see what kind of CFM we're pulling on this particular 800p. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are. I apologize for the gauge being upside down, but this is the directional flow of air that we need. So we just flip the gauge up uh, to do this the, the quick and easy way. What we're going to do is right now we're set at static 100 PSI on the main regulator coming into the machine. We're going to show you the working pressure, which is about 50 PSI. We're going to show you the CFM, the volume of air needed to keep up those pressures. And what you're going to notice is the needle is going to go to about 20 CFM. Uh, we're using approximately, I think, a 10 millimeter ID blasting tip. And this is going to require 20 CFM of air. So let's get started and see what happens. So there we have it, uh, 20 CFM is required here at uh, the 50 to 60 working PSI that we're working with with a 10 millimeter ID tip. 
Um, these are pressures required to operate this machine effectively. Um, can you use a lower CFM compressor or air source? You can, but you have to understand that this machine will have to sit and wait for a few minutes for your compressor to catch back up. Um, there are many different ways that you can optimize uh, your shot to help the CFM, um, but that's something maybe we can cover in a later video. Uh, but again, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, seeing the CFM requirements here, and I hope this video helped. So if you have any further questions, give us a call, shoot us an email, and thanks for watching.